get it. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab on. Use my thumb, shoulder. Come up to here. But he's gonna push on me. Maybe he pushes. Maybe he's got. And I'm starting to lose his arm. When I start to feel like the elbow's gonna come out, I start to pull the elbow. So I'm. This is too late now. We lost it. It's gonna get. It's gonna be gone. So when you have it, you start to feel like start to tug. Once I feel him coming out. At this point, can you see where I am? My, my left arm is slid down, and instead of, instead of pulling, because he's pulling, right? We're in the tug of war. He's pulling, I'm pulling, I'm now gonna push. So I push it down, and then, and this one's pulling. So now start to pull and see what that feels like. It's tough, right? Because now it's basically like I'm doing a Kimura. And the more, the more he pulls, the more it creates the tension I'm looking for. I need tension. Now I go like this and I key lock. Bend the wrist in and apply the torque in the same way as if you guys were doing this. Okay, in the same way, except you're just here. It's not gonna be as much torque as a Kimura, but it'll be torque. So maybe he's got his head or his hand. You can do, yeah, go back to hand, that's fine. So start to pull your arm out. It's about to come out. I push and I grip. Sorry about that. Now I'll try to pull it out now. Now, now that I'm here, I'm just hanging my weight. See, I'm just like lowering my body weight. Okay. If he walks in a circle, like maybe you circle that way and you pull me this way. Like I don't want to fall on my face, like stumble. So I keep my balance. So try to use your arm to make me fall that way, which is kind of the direction I can. See, I just move my feet. If you circle the other way, it would, you would start to feel like, yeah, he starts to feel like he's breaking his own arm. So when he circles towards my front, he feels like it's worse. So he kind of like, he gives me his arm in a sense so that I'm not, I'm not breaking it. But he also, but if he circles to his right and he pulls me in front of him, I have to just keep my balance. And then now we're good to go. I'm gonna fall towards the mat and I throw my right foot through. Okay. And it's gonna create a Kimura. In a sense, he's going to have to roll. If he doesn't roll, we'll, we'll get the shoulder lock. Do it slow. I'm walking. He's going to roll over. Pin the wrist to the mat. Follow up on top. Simple move. Drive the guy on his side and drive the wrist up his back for simplicity. Okay, if the guy, if the guy allows the position, you're just going to submit him. So it's, it's simple. But... What's more than likely, we're just gonna get a takedown. That's the most likely thing that's gonna happen. We're just gonna get a takedown out of it, okay? So one more time, you guys here, we've got the elbow, shoulder, I get the 12 one, he's pulling out. Push it, grip it. Now that I'm here, I'm applying that torque. See how I'm holding his hand towards the outside, okay? So if it's inside of his chest, you can still do the move. This is how you legally do it in wrestling because it's not gonna break his shoulder, but I want it to go to the outside. So try to pull your hand in towards your chest like that. See, if he's doing that, he's letting you control him. But if he tries to pull his arm out, you see how like now I can bring it outside. So if you're trying to take it out, like it actually lets me take him through. If his hand ends up in front and you can't get it to the mat, which is likely, He'll, he'll defend, maybe he'll hold his hands. You won't be able to. Then we just get on top and we're good to go. We do have our arm bar we've been practicing. We'll do that next, okay? So first just use it to get on top. Um, I think the last thing I wanna say is the angle at which you fall. So when I do this, I wanna go this way. Like, so I'm falling right here and I'm trying to go this way, see? So he's going here, I'm going here. So I can do this. If you guys fall like this, you don't have torque on Dan. There's no way for me to make Dan fall now at this angle, okay? So when you fall, make sure you, you're, you're hanging on it and we're gonna make a rotation. Okay, take him go through. And then right shoulder, and I'm driving this up his back, boom. Get in the Kimura, okay? Let's go, one, two, three. Hug the arm, hug it. And he's pulling out, now push. 
push and straight, straighten it down. Straight down. So now, and again, he's circling to the front. So remember, if he doesn't circle to the front, let's say he stays to the side of you too much. Like, I'm saying he doesn't cir yeah. circle to the front, like he's not gonna break his own arm. But what I'm saying is like, if he's just chilling like this, Take his back. I mean, you could just go behind him now. Yeah. You can just yes. grab around. So he, what I mean is simulate like it's real. Like he's still gonna be trying to do a little bit of circling, trying to pull the arm out, there's tension. Now go ahead, keep the tension the whole time. Stay right on top of him when you spin. Stay on top of him. Up on top, good. I know it's hard, you don't wanna hurt your partner, but you gotta like, lose your weight. Yeah. Without hurting his arm. But you still gotta put your weight down. You drop your weight on your butt, then your, your simulation isn't right. So watch, when he's here, he comes on top. Yeah. See? And he, he put maybe like a knee, you know, like a knee on the mat, just so he doesn't hurt his training partner, but he's still that on person. you. Don't, don't put all the weight on your back or your butt, and then let your partner do what they want. So, we got the two on one, okay? Shoulder, and I key lock right away, and I'm hanging, I'm putting pressure, okay? As I go into the move, I'm gonna try to push it out, but he's gonna bring it in front to here. So maybe I started like this, but the moment he felt the move, he brought it here. Now, once I do this, I'm putting weight. Be careful with your partner, but you see what I just did? Like, when you land like this, don't be all lazy sitting on your butt. Put weight on them, get them on their side, and then I just release the two on one, the hand on the wrist, turn my palm up, palm to palm. My right elbow stays in, so I have this lock right here. It, it, uh, right now, he could just go like this, and he's out. So how do we secure that? So this, the lock, stops his hand from going that way, and he can't go that way, but he can go backwards, so I just run this shoulder into the back of his tricep elbow, and then my chest. So now he tries to pull his arm out, it's really hard. Okay, now I have a torque to it like this. So we wanna keep that pressure on. I'm gonna keep that pressure as I'm controlling him, driving him on his side. I'm gonna walk up towards his head, step over the head. Now I'm gonna sit down towards my left so I can pass my right leg. So he'll be like worried about his arm. He's afraid you're gonna pull it. Okay, you're gonna transfer your right leg over. And then we have this kind of arm bar. Like this is gold, okay. So we're gonna keep pressure against his head. I'm gonna pry it and keep the Kimura action going to break his grip. So I'm applying torque this way, and then I'm gonna pull it to me. Okay, so I'm pulling it, but it's not all arms. It's also my hips. I'm opening up my hip joint at the same time. So I'm doing this, I'm doing this, okay? It breaks. Now, at this point, we have a submission. It's possible to do it a Kimura style like this. But if he won't tap, like he just keeps sitting up against your leg and he's like, he's just real stubborn. We can always do it more traditional with our arm bar. Like we could just let it out, like pull it and come to an arm bar. But instead of doing it like that, what I like to do once we break the grip, see how he's grabbing his thigh? If he grabs his thigh, I just continue the Kimura style I'm like pulling and I break that grip. I keep doing this and I open my elbow just enough to let his arm turn. And then once it turns, it becomes an elbow lock like this. Now I'm closing my right elbow, trapping in the armpit. If you want, you can take that out and do it like this, or at the end, take it out and do it like this. Okay? So it's all up to you. Shoulder, key lock the, the, the two on one. Notice my opponent has head position so I can't attack him, okay? See how I, I went for his leg and his leg kind of goes back? This is actually the angle you love because now I can throw him through so easy. Look at all my body weight and I change my lock and I've got my elbows, sorry about that Ryan, but see my shoulder comes forward, I'm on my toes, I'm driving my body weight. Step, transfer, I can lock my feet right here if you guys want for more security. Breaking the grips. And then once it's here, in the armpit, if I want, if I can't get the arm bar, take this out, come get the thumb, control it. If the guy tries to hitchhike, I've already got the thumb. So I can one hand this, okay, or two. Obviously two, why did I say that? Why did I say one handed? It's 
It's a show off. Okay, nobody's watching. All right, shoulder, control. Remember, I'm trying to get to half that foot. Lock, you trying to move? Yeah, I have that control. Step over, transfer, breaking the grip, Kimura, and elbow lock. Okay, it's up to you. One, two, three. This one, this one's been shown on past videos. Why am I showing it again? Um, I'm showing it again because it's a move that I hit in training, live training the other day. I started training again. And then I was like, you know what? This is a good move. We need to show the world this move. Not enough people practice the two-on-one. So guys, look, people out there are gonna be susceptible to your two-on-one. And because they don't practice it, they don't practice the key log version um, that much. Again, there, there are people, when I say they, I mean the overwhelming majority. Remember, when the majority of people are practicing one thing, like double leg, single leg, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. There's other moves that are fringe, that are kind of like advanced, or you don't see a lot of them. They become really effective, okay? They become really effective because nobody's prepared to deal with them. And the Russian two-on-one tie-up is one of those positions where it's everyone knows it's effective. You can find the two-on-one in a lot of wrestling matches. You can find it everywhere. But the Russian two-on-one still, I think, deserves more credit and more clout throughout the grappling world than it has right now. Um, especially in the United States. So if you guys practice this two-on-one, I know that you're gonna be able to pull it off. Grappling, jujitsu, man, you can you can drive a guy's arm behind his back, you can do the arm bar I just showed, and you guys are gonna submit more people, I guarantee it, okay? And it's sexy, it's very sexy. All right, let's go, one, two, three. See you guys next time with more great stuff.